just a supplementary on uh, one of the things that John Buddy said around uh, working with the National Treasury and uh, your work as a member of Parliament, the abuse of Article 223. Yes. And uh, you know, since we were both in the Budget Committee, this has been a huge problem. And it continues to date. You've had in the recent past very senior government officers trying to arm twist people in the National Treasury to pay uh, even confidential expenditure out of uh, Article 223. I don't want to hear what you intend to do to now stem from uh, the, uh, the root cause uh, or, or where this problem emanates from, the National Treasury, abuse of Article 223. Lastly, when you spoke about the good things that we lost in the finance bill, you may or you may not agree with me that partially the problem was out of very poor communication by the National Treasury. Kenyans out there were left to just listen to what was being said by members of parliament during debates on the finance bill to know what were the good things in that finance bill. How differently will you now uh, at the helm of the National Treasury, if approved by this committee, will you communicate to Kenyans to be able to know that uh, a finance bill, as you said, is an omnibus bill. It has very many good things for the benefit of the country which get lost uh, in the misinformation and disinformation campaign that was there with the last one. Uh, so my question is, how will you uh, uh, shift the communication from the National Treasury? And with all respect to those who were there before, the, the, there was literally no communication coming from the National Treasury. Uh, how do you intend to change that? And I agree with you on uh, the pending bills, but I uh, also tell you that uh, probably what you also need to do is look at the procurement. For instance, and you've been a member of parliament all these years, CDF. There are never any pending bills in CDF because of the system through which we procure. You only procure when you have exchequer with you. So probably as, uh, as you, if you get approved, that's one of the other things you need to look at, uh, to remodel whatever is being done in mainstream government with CDF. Mr. Speaker, I'll go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Thank you, Speaker. To the nominee, Honorable Mbadi, you are on record in Parliament during debate of um, the last approval of the Cabinet uh, Secretaries, and it is, uh, it's gone viral, widely known, that you referred to the Cabinet Secretaries then as skunks. Now you find yourself as one of the nominees are you a skunk or are you not? The second question is that uh, we have advisors who I'm reliably informed sit at State House who advise the president on matters economy. You will be seated at Treasury. I would like to know between if this committee and the National Assembly approves you, you will have your opinion, they will have their opinion. How do you marry the two to make sure that you're talking the same? Because we have seen in the public some of the advisors talking like they're not in the same government, like I, you know, the way how they, they, they work. So I would like to know whether, which supersedes the other, or, and how will you make sure that you work together uh, in, on matters economy and as you advise the president? Finally, there's been allegations that in Treasury, we have people who've been there for so long, Ch times have changed, you're seeing we are in very extraordinary times. We need to think extraordinary to get our country to where we want to be. How do we make sure once you're there? You are not held captive because we have seen other CSAs with very good credentials, even you. If approved, I don't know what happens when you go there. I don't know whether it is the system, you become captives of IMF, you become captives of what is going on. What will you do differently? Because we are in very extraordinary times, uh, Mr. Nominee. Thank you. 
Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, allow me to, in response to the questions by leader majority, to start with the pending bills on. In fact, Mr. Speaker had a lot to say, uh, but I limit, because of limitation of time, I left out something on uh, the issue of pricing and general procurement and supply chain management. That is an area that we must address. It is what we would call addressing corruption. Mr. Speaker, if you were to buy your manor in Kisumu and buy it in Kericho, despite even the transport costs, you are almost buying it at the same price. But in the same government building, same government building, fifth floor, tenth floor, buying the same item at different prices. We cannot continue like that as a country. We must find a system of standardizing our prices. And again, there has been talk about automation, end-to-end -end procurement must now be implemented. We cannot procrastinate further. Kenyans are crying for value for money. Kenyans are talking about economy in the use of our resources. That must be realized by deliberately ensuring that we automate procurement from the budgeting to procurement, to receipt of goods, to payment. It must be end to end. This idea of saying we will implement it in July, now it has been moved to January. The moment I become a CS, I want to make sure that that is implemented so that there is value for money. We can save. The former president talked about us losing 2 billion shillings a day. The current president has also talked about us wastage. In fact, Mr. Speaker, you'll remember there was a time we used to talk about 10%. Now it is 30% and counting. If you listen to those who are involved in procurement, we cannot continue in that trajectory, especially now that resources are becoming more and more scarce. We must make sure that the little resources that we'll collect, and that is the responsibility of CS Finance, by the way, to ensure that there is proper tra accountability and transparency in the use of public resources. On the Mr. issue... Buddy, are you saying that we, apart from the IFMI system, the IFMI system is not working? It is not end-to-end. -end. <laughs> IFMI system is, the procurement is broken. It is not end-to-end. -end. They will tell you we have automated procurement. It's not true. So we must make sure that from budgeting all the way to payment and even use of goods, it is seamlessly integrated. We must do that. Mr. Mr. Speaker, and they have pushed that to January. They have been pushing that automation. Every time they push it, the time comes, they push it, e procurement is pushed, another date is given. So there must be a stop to that. And that stop, hopefully, will be under my leadership at the Treasury. On the issue of... Uh, if we approve you, in how many days will you achieve this? I want to work with the new set deadline of January, so that we don't pass January again. Okay. Yes. Um, the communication, I am in total agreement. In fact, the reason why we lost the finance bill was communication. And this we must change. And by the way, one thing that I would want to talk about and uh, maybe advise the current government now that I'm going to sit at the highest policy decision-making body, if approved, is that we must improve on our communication. All departments, communication cannot be left one individual con called communication, uh, Honorable Mwaura, no, <laughs> government spokesman. We must have every ministry and department communicating explicitly and clearly yes. to Kenyans. And Treasury is going to lead. I have already inquired and found that we have a state of the art media center at the Treasury on 14th floor, Mr. Speaker. That must be utilized properly. But again, we must re understand that the current generation would not be very comfortable with the convention of the traditional ways of communicating. We must be innovative. We must use the current system of communication. I know I'm not in Gen Z, I'm not a millennial, but we must be responsive to the way they communicate. And my ministry will adopt modern methods of communication. The final one was uh, on, from Honorable Shungwe, and it was the first one. What did, did, what did you ask about the finance bill 2024? That finance bill was on uh, what you have actually what done. Just, now, article 223 two, abuse. Now, Honorable Shungu and I have complained over the years about this article 223. 
being misused and abused. Remember, Mr. Speaker, Ruaraka land was bought through Article 223, yes. which, if you look at the Constitution and PFM Act, is very clear on how we should apply or use Article 223. It was for a good intention that before that the government may find that there is something that should be addressed urgently, but there are not enough funds. Yet now we abuse it. We spend it on anything. Fortunately, it requires approval of the CS Treasury. And so if, it has, if that abuse is to continue, it is John Buddy, if you approve my nomination, who will continue with that bad habit. But I came up with a legislation, Mr. Speaker, not to cause any aspersion on this when I was uh, just recently. I'm still a member of parliament anyway. I wanted to have some controls and checks on application of this at Code 223. It was frustra frustrated at the committee stage of the House, Committee of Finance. Why? Because Treasury refused to accept that legislation. Where I wanted, before money is spent, before Cabinet Secretary approves, he should inform Parliament, give Parliament 17 days. Just because Parliament is the one that has the constitutional mandate to approve expenditure. No any other body, even Cabinet Secretary. But now, it was frustrated. I hope another member will pick it up now that um, I'm there so that we don't, I don't resist it further. But I want to give guarantee in the meantime, with the current legal framework, the I, will not, note is if you I will not allow for abuse You of this. become part of government, introduce us a government bill through the majority leader. I will, I will be very happy to take it up if he sends it uh, as take Minister. Take it to Lange. cabinet. Thank you. Thank you. Mi and Mr. Majority. But Mr. Speaker, let me just uh, give confidence that this article will not be abused, even with the current uh, legal framework. Okay? Uh, to, uh, on, to the questions by Honorable Naisula, skunk. Mr. Speaker, let me say the following. Up to now, I'm a member of the National Assembly with a mandate to oversight, with a mandate to legislate, and to represent. Mr. Speaker, I have a duty I, up to now to vet and approve President's appointees. I must discharge that mandate properly. And that is what I did. I am moving to the other side of the executive, I will not have that mandate anymore. It is now the mandate of Honorable Naisula and the rest of us to determine whether John Bad is a skunk or not. <laughs> I want to leave it there. <laughs> On advisors, it is true, and by the way, you can't stop the president from having advisors, whether political, economic, or otherwise. It is, he has that mandate, he has that uh, authority to hire. The only thing I want to state is uh, legally, I am the principal, or I'm going to be the principal if approved, advisor to the president on matters finance. You advise, the person advised take the, takes the advice or not. You cannot force the person you advise to take your advice. But I also believe that these people are professionals like me. So we would be engaging at one point and agreeing or disagreeing, but the final decision will be taken by the cabinet, which is chaired by the president. Finally, the only question I would give is if you are an advisor, please make sure the person you advise communicates. Don't communicate on behalf of the person you advise. So if I have advisors today, what I would do is to tell my advisors, please make sure when you advise me, I communicate the advice. The rule of thumb, advisors are never known. Thank you. They are backroom operators. Yes. 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 Thank you. 